Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought for the next lesson we would take one from right out of the edit room. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I just wrapped up doing some spots for A Good Day to Die Hard, the French version up here in Canada. And what I basically had to do is I had to mimic the text treatment that you see in the theatrical trailer, which you can check out at trailers.apple.com. And I had to do that for, like I said, the French-Canadian versions of the spots. And I thought for this tutorial, I would show you how simple it is to create that style of text for a project that you happen to be working on. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony, and let's get started. Okay, now I know I just said we're going to Alt-Tab into Symphony, but I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to Alt-Tab into Adobe's Photoshop. And I think it sort of goes without saying that if you're going to make your Media Composer Symphony purchase, you really need to purchase Photoshop as well. You know, I know I know I always say that you need to buy After Effects, but you know what? Photoshop really is, you know, sort of the the go-to application for anything that you're going to do to manipulate things that you really can't do inside a Media Composer in Symphony. And this is what I'm going to show you right now, something that you really can't do easily inside of Symphony. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up to File and I'm going to come down to Open. And I downloaded this great free grunge texture from the internet. Now, I'm not going to use this inside of the title tree, but I'm going to use a variation of it. So what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to come up to Image. I'm going to come down to Adjustments. I'm going to come to Hue Saturation. We're just going to take the saturation all the way out of that. I'm going to say OK. What we're going to do now is we're going to come back down to Adjustments. I'm going to come down to Levels. Levels is actually up here. And let's just make this very contrasty. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I say, okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm happy with the way that this looks, but what I need to do is I need to make this tileable because I need to fill this inside of a 1920 by 1080 frame. So how do I go about doing that? Well, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to hit Control and A on Windows, Command and A on the Mac to select the entire image. I'm going to navigate up to Edit, and I'm going to come down. Let's make sure we're on Edit here. I'm going to come down to Define Pattern. It's going to ask me what do I want to call this. I'm just going to call this. I'm going to call this Kevin's Grunge One, and I'll say okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to close this all together. Don't need it anymore. I'm going to say no. We're going to come up to File. We're going to come down to New. and We want to create a new 1920, but what I want to make sure of here is that I'm in Film and Video, and let's select HDTV 1080p 2997. Now the reason that I do that is so that when I hit Control and the colon semicolon, it turns on the Safe Grid, Safe Title, and Safe Picture. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, double click on the background and we're actually just going to turn it from being a locked layer into an actual layer here. Now I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to come down to Pattern Overlay. Now you'll see as soon as I turn that on, I get this funky pattern, not quite what I want. But you're going to see that if I come up to the pattern and I drop it down, take a look at what I have here. I have that custom pattern that I just created called appropriately enough, as you can see, Kevin's Grunge 1. I'm going to select it and take a look at that, a tileable element inside of Photoshop. This is sort of one of those things that I always go to Photoshop. I find myself doing this all the time. It's a great trick to keep in your back pocket so that when you know, oh, okay, you know, I've got this tileable element, I need to do, you know, tile it quickly. You don't need to go into After Effects. You can do it right within Photoshop very quickly and very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this out. We're going to call this, I don't know, we just call this Kevin's Grunge 1, sort of similar to what we had it called in Photoshop. And I'll just save it as a JPEG. We'll say save. Now, of course, we're working in a 720p project here. So what I'm going to do is right click and say import. We're going to select the grunge element, and I'm just going to say that we're going to resize the image to fit the format raster. We'll just say go, and I'll say open, and there it is. Very cool. Okay, so let's create our title. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to clip. I'm going to come down to new title. Now, most people would think that I would just use the standard title tool, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come to marquee. We'll give Marquee a second to open here. Now, the reason I'm coming to Marquee is because I want to be able to easily manipulate the scale on the Y axis here. So what we're going to do is I'll just turn on my All Toolbar buttons. There we go. Let's just turn our safes on. And I'm just going to type in, appropriately enough, we'll call this Die Hardest. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use the font that I use because I don't think I have it on my system. I think I'll just go back to my favorite of Impact. And let's just increase the size of this here. Okay, now we can actually make it a little bit bigger than this just for the purposes of what we're doing because I don't mind if we're slightly outside of title safe. There we go. And like I said, what I want to do now is I'm just going to come up to the basic tool set here. 
just so I don't have all that animation stuff at the bottom of the screen here. And what we're going to do, and once I switch back to basic, you're going to notice the transform properties appear immediately. And what I'm going to do is just grab the Y scale and just scale it right out here. There we go. Very nice. Okay. And what we're going to do is simply say file. We're going to save all to bin. Let's call this die hardest. And we'll save it into sequences. I'll just say go. Let's take this. We'll drop this into my timeline. Now what I'm going to show you is nothing new. Let's just make sure we go plus 20 seconds here. Let's make sure I have numlock turned on here. There we go. Let's try that again here. Plus 20. There we go. Perfect. Let's edit this into my timeline. Now you'll remember from previous lessons, we know how to put a texture in here, much like the Rocky effect. What I'm going to do is simply double click on the title to expand it out. I'm just going to grab this grunge here. I'll just come back a little bit here, and I'm just going to paste it in over top of the graphic fill, just like such. There we go. Now you'll see that if I step out, there it is. Now the problem is it doesn't quite look good. I really can't see what's going on unless I have this over top of a white background. So what do I do? Well, here's what we're going to do to make this grunge uh, texture work for us. What we're going to do is I'm going to double click on the title. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is step into it. So I just see just what's going on inside this title. Now what I'm going to do is take a look at just the grunge layer and I'm going to press T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire layer and I'm going to press F9. Now F9 is my shortcut for pre-compose or collapse. There it is right there. Now if you don't have it mapped to your keyboard, no problem. You can simply find it right here. Okay. Now that I have that collapsed down, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new title. Let's navigate up to Clip. Let's come down to New Title. Just select the standard title tool. Let's make sure Marquee's closed before we do that. There we go. And let's try that again here. Clip new title. We'll select the title tool. And I just want a white background here. There we go. Perfect. Just close this. Say save sure. Call this white appropriately enough. And what we're going to do is we're now going to step into this collapse. We're going to create a new layer because I can create as many layers as I want inside this collapse. And we're going to put that white title. Let's just make sure we got just the white title here. We're going to put this white title in underneath the grunge filter or the grunge uh, clip, just like such. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to call up the effects palette. What we're going to do now is come down to the keying section. There we go, key. We're just going to simply select the Luma key. I'm going to drag it and drop it. Now you'll see as soon as I let go, I've got a little bit of the texture going on, but not really enough for us. So what I'm going to do is just simply grab the gain and just bring it back a little bit. That's looking pretty good, kind of like that. Now, obviously, this is a little bit too, uh, you know, looping. I'd probably want this to be a little bit more generic, but for the purposes of what we're doing, I think this is good to sort of get across what I want to show you. What I'm going to do now is simply step out a couple steps and take a look at what I have now. I now have a very cool text treatment for the newest movie, uh, not related to any movie that's out there currently, called Die Hardest. Now, it's also very cool about this, and if you watch the theatrical trailer, you'll see this right away. What I'm going to do is just step in. Now, of course, I was using white as the text color, but you'll see in the trailer, of course, that we also have sort of that blood red color. So let's take a look at the blood red color. Now, that's probably a little bit too red, probably something like such, I think. Okay, we'll just close this off. We'll say save. Of course, it'll update right away, and there you go. You now have got more grungy look inside of your text. Very, very nice. Okay. Now I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put this back to white. So we'll just, of course, right click edit title. Now, of course, edit title you're going to find in version 6.5 of Media Composer. But you see, creating all these different colored backgrounds is very quick and very easy. Okay. Now, there is one last thing that I do want to show you that if you look carefully at the titles inside of the trailer, you are going to notice. And that is and why is this title tool not closing? Let's just close it here. Let's try this one more time here. I actually think I have it in here anyways already. White, there we go. Perfect. We'll just drop it in here. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, now there is, like I said, one last thing that's going on in the text inside of the trailer. The text actually looks like it has been cut right across and it started to fall off. It's slightly shifted. Now the question is, how do you get in and mimic that inside of Media Composer and Symphony? Well, believe it or not, 
it's actually relatively easy to do. Let me show you how simple it is. What we're going to do again, you'll notice a lot of this stuff that I'm doing, we're going back and forth to the title tool, whether it's the standard title tool or marquee. It's a very, very powerful tool, whether you're doing titling or not. And this is what I mean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to say new title. I'm going to select marquee. And what I want to do is I want to have the cut happen right across, sort of on a you know harsh diagonal here course let's just come back to views we'll say all toolbar buttons I'm just gonna zoom back ever so slightly here actually it's probably too much I think we're probably okay there and what we're gonna do is we're going to come up to the pen tool what we're gonna do is just draw a slash sort of right across the screen like such okay what we're gonna do now again is we're gonna select the pen tool we're gonna do exactly the same thing again just like such now, of course, not perfect, but that's okay. We can make it perfect. We're just going to overlap here a little bit. There we go. And what we also want to do is we want to make this black. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, what exactly is going on? Why are you doing this? I'm just going to save all to bin. We'll say save. Now, what I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to quickly export this. I'm just going to say export. We'll just call this matte. Okay, let's just check in my options here. I'm on RGB. We'll say save. Okay, let's just clear our monitor here. What we're going to do is right click, say import. We're just going to import that mat back in. Now, the reason I do this is so that I'm working with an actual title and not with, or with an actual piece of media, and not with a title. Because working with effects can get to be a little bit of a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new layer by pressing Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And we're just simply going to take this and we're going to drop it into video layer two. What we're going to do now is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to make sure the effects palette is up. And instead of using Luma key, I'm going to use Mac key. And take a look at what I've done. I've now taken Die Hardest and I've cut it sort of in half. What we're going to do now is we're going to take both these layers. I'm going to copy them by pressing Control, Alt and C on Windows, Command, Option and C on the Mac. And we're simply going to create two new video layers by hitting Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac twice. And we're just going to edit these in exactly as we had them before, just like such. Now, the only difference is that right now we still only have the upper right hand part of the image that we're looking at. So what we're going to do is step into effects mode. Now, again, if you don't have effects mode mapped on your keyboard, don't worry. You can always find it right here or you can always find it right over here. There we go. And what we're going to do is once we have the effects editor open, I'm simply going to invert the key. And now we have die hardest back exactly the way we had it before. The only catch is not really broken is it so how do we fix that well let me show you what we're going to do with this mat key here is I'm going to set the horizontal position and vertical position to be five and five and take a look at what I've just done I've now just cut die hardest and I've shifted it over so it makes it look like it's broken and it's starting to fall apart so what I'm going to do now is simply right click and say export which is going to call this die hardest I'm going to say save. Let's take a look at what this looks like, sort of at a higher quality here. I'll just minimize all this here and take a look at that. I've essentially recreated what we saw in the Die Hard trailer inside of Media Composer and Symphony with a little help from Adobe's Photoshop. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.